Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Gulf Foss from Sound Theory and mid side mode or dual mono mode in Logic Pro 10 to do some spectral reshaping and sort of remaster a track that maybe didn't turn out so well. So, if you're not familiar with Gulf Foss, it's an automatic equalizer from Sound Theory. It essentially analyzes whatever you put into it and you can recover and tame certain frequencies. Um, and then you can also apply a bias to that. So that's how much uh, recovering or taming uh, you want, how much it favors that recovering and taming. And I'll talk about all these controls as I go through the video. Um, Gulfoss is one of my absolute favorite plugins for mixing and mastering work uh, and also for remastering work, which is what I'm gonna be doing here. The thing is I don't really, I haven't used it much on the channel because it's sort of like the secret weapon that I pull, you know, that I pull out at the end. Um, and it hasn't just, just hasn't been applicable to any videos uh, that I've done recently. So one of the videos uh, that I showed you guys uh, recently was that you can load any plugin in Logic in dual mono mode. And this also applies to third-party plugins like Gulfoss, most third-party plugins. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's reloaded Gulfoss and dual mono, and you can see the individual left and right controls here. So the thing is right now I have two Gulfosses now, one that's being applied to the left channel, one that's being applied to the right channel. So if you click here and then change this from stereo to mid-side, now I can use Gulfoss in mid-side mode. So I can have an automatic EQ being applied to the mid channel and then another automatic EQ being applied to the side channel. So when you're remastering tracks that maybe the mix or master didn't turn out so great, or maybe an old recording that you're trying to go in and remaster, a lot of times you don't have the original multi-track sessions for those projects. So you have to work with your stereo master. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do here. So being able to split up the song into at least bare minimum mid and side channels is really helpful. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do before I get started is I'm gonna add this gain plugin. I already have it added here as my first plugin on my channel strip. And all I'm gonna do is knock down the gain by six dB, just so I can have a little bit of uh, extra headroom to work with, because this is, as you can see, is a fully mixed and mastered track, but there's some issues with the spectral balance, the, the frequency balance that I don't like. So I like the tone of the voice, I like the drum sound, I like the guitar sound, but the main thing it's lacking is bass. I really need some bass reinforcement. Everything sounds really thin and boxy and tinny sounding without that bass reinforcement. The mix is a little tinny too in the mid range and the mid high range, so I'll fix that here as well. So one thing I just wanna mention up front is you don't have to do this with Gulf Foss. You could do it with a range of other plugins. Um, I really like Gulfoss because it's very fluid. The frequency, the actual frequency that's being boosted or, or cut at any given point in time is fluid. And also the amount of the boost and uh, taming or recover and taming as they call it here is fluid. So I find this works best with either Gulfoss or some dynamic uh, EQ like Ozone's dynamic EQ, for example. However, if you have Ozone, um, Ozone already has its own spectral reshaper built right into it. Um, what I like about using Gulf Foss over that plugin is that the spectral, spectral reshaper in Ozone just focuses in on one range and reduces it. It doesn't, you can't like boost it. Um, and it's also not frequency fluid like uh, Gulf Foss is. Okay, so let's start with the mid channel. So you select the mid channel and actually what I'm gonna do is go back to the side channel and I'm gonna pull the gain of the side channel all the way down. So I'm mostly just gonna hear the mid channel here. Mm -hmm. 
So this is all information that's just in the center. So really, when it comes to base and base management, you want the base to be in the center. You don't want it to be on the sides. So that's the first advantage of loading this in dual mono mode as opposed to just stereo mode, is if I were to add a base boost um, in stereo mode, it's gonna add it to everything, the mid, the, the center, the sides, everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up this recover parameter and you'll see certain frequencies start to be added in. Yeah, it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like cardboard. It sounds like it was a speaker inside of a shoebox uh, before that boost. Now, normally when you use Gullfoss, um, you're not going to use your recover and tame values this high. Um, really, just for this uh, use is where you're going to boost it this much. Normally with Gullfoss, if you're doing like mastering or anything like that, you're not going to really be using values higher than 30, 40, 50 percent. Um, Here's the thing, though. It's it's boosting the lows, but it's also it was boosting the highs. So one of the cool things about Gullfoss is it has these range limiters, and you can apply the recover or tame to just the range within these limiters. So it actually works really well um, with tracks that are too bright. You can focus these in on the high range, and instead of recovering, you can tame. Or in our case, we can just focus these in on the low range and just recover these to make up for that bass. Likewise, if you had a track that had too much bass, you could pull the recover back down and pull the tame up just for the low frequencies. Now again, keep in mind, we're just hearing the mid channel. So let's pull the side channel back in. Let's hear both of these at the same time. Now, another control that you can play around with is this boost control. Let me go ahead and pull the side channel out just again. We're just here, the mid channel. And what this boost does is it applies a sort of like an equal loudness principle uh, boost, meaning that it boosts the lows and treble, but then sort of cuts the mids. Like if you have a mix where it's there's too much focus on the, the mid channels, the middle frequencies, um, and there's not enough bass and enough highs, you can compensate for that. Or you can go in the negative, uh, and do the opposite. So let me just uh, let me just show you what I mean. So by pulling that up a bit, it's simultaneously boosting the lows, but also cutting a bit of the mid frequencies. And here's the thing: the boost parameter is not affected by the range sliders. Just the recover, tame, bias, and brighten are affected by the range sliders. But I don't want to pull that up too much because I don't want to scoop all of my mids out. I still want some of that fundamental body from the guitar, from the vocals. But as you can see in here, it's pretty easy to simultaneously recover your fundamental bass and also tame that crispiness uh, and the tinniness just a little bit. Okay, so let's move over to the side channel. So what I'm going to do for now is pull down the mid channel so I can just hear the side channel by itself. So what's in the side channels is mostly the high frequencies and mid, some of the mid frequencies from the rhythm guitar parts, the reverb and time-based effects, and the cymbals. 
So here we really don't want to accentuate the base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with the recover and tame parameters, find a nice balance where I'm recovering some frequencies, but cutting others. And then I'm gonna play around with this bias control. Now the bias control controls the preference that Gulfos has for recovering frequencies, so that's the positive bias, and a negative bias is its preference for taming. So if you wanted to do more taming, you'd pull this down. If you wanted to do more recovering, you'd pull it up. You can also add uh, brightness to this with the brighten control. So this will help to bring back some of that shimmery uh, air that we kind of lost in the mid channel because I, I used the boost control to cut some of the mids and it effectively cut some of the mid highs as well. So this will add this back for the sides so that we don't end up with a recording that's, you know, too tame, too warm sounding. So we've added a bit more life uh, to the side channels. Let's go ahead and pull the mid channel back in. So one, just a side note here, when you hit the bypass button, this is only going to bypass the channel that you have selected. So if I wanna hear all of Gulfoss bypassed, I'm gonna have to bypass it with Logic's master bypass button. Yeah, so that's miles better than what I had before. Um, I've recovered a lot of the bass. I've brightened the sides. So effectively, this is also going to give it a bit more width. If you add more high frequencies to the sides, this can um, make the image sound bigger and wider as well. So it's not so narrow. It's not so boxy and tinny and plasticky anymore, but still has the original brightness and some of the crispiness and the guitar tones that are, you know, good things. Um, there's a balance to everything, you know, you don't want the guitars to be overly saturated, but you also don't want them to be undersaturated. And really the big thing here is the, adding in that fundamental bass. Bass management is one of the most difficult things to get right when you're mixing and mastering. Um, it's one of those things like we're in the high frequencies, you can sort of get away with a mix that's a little too bright or a little too dull. Um, it's not going to ruin a mix, but there's a really fine line between too much bass and not enough bass. And I constantly find myself going back um, to my masters and making slight bass adjustments just to make sure that the bass sounds great on speakers, on headphones, on earbuds, on, on any source. Now, just for full transparency's sake, uh, this video was not sponsored in any way, uh, but I will leave a link to check out Gulfoss in the video description below. If the controls in Gulfoss are still a bit confusing for you, go check out the six tutorial videos that I did for Sound Theory. They explain all of the parameters in Gulfoss in more detail. So yes, I did do some paid work for Sound Theory a while back, but this video is in no way sponsored by Sound Theory or even suggested by them. I just really love using Gulfoss on my mixing and mastering projects. I was just doing some mastering the other day and I was using this same technique to shape the tone of the masters and I thought it might be something you all would be interested in. So if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can check me out at patreon.com 
forward slash music tech help guy. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.